You are exactly where you need to be. This is Conversations with Susanna. It's on the World Herald Live app. We're here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 12 to 1. We've got great conversations that will empower you and take you from this step to the next step with a little bit more knowledge, helping you to be a little bit more in control of your life. Please note that you can go to Omaha.com, Susanna, you get my Twitter feed, you get my Facebook feed, and you can email me, text me, anything you want. We're here for you to have an, have an understanding of who you are, what you are, how to be better in the moment. That is what it's all to, about. Right now, I have in my studio, Nadine. how do you say your last name? Uh, it's uh, the first name is actually Kaylen. Kaylen, and yeah. the last name is Revenzi. Revenzi, you know yes. I'm so good with names, aren't I, Chad? Chad's waving his head no. I've called him Mabel and <laughs> Margaret, and you know all sorts of names. Poor Chad is the god over there who handles the the technical thing. You did M. K. Mueller's. Uh, class, correct? I did about three and a half, almost four years ago. All right, tell me how it it started. How how did you go to the class? What took you there? Because there is a synchronicity. Oh, most definitely, mm-hmm. most definitely. Um, I was actually at one of her presentations. The only time I had ever gone to a presentation with um, human resource management, and uh, MK happened to be speaking. I had the opportunity of winning one of the books, Eight to Great. Mm-hmm. Um, this was in July of 2011, and discovered that I this is what I'd been looking for, and I had been looking for it for a long time. Finally, it had attracted to me, and the next month in August, I knew I had to be certified to become a trainer. This, and it was more so at the time to help me get my life where I wanted it to be. Okay. And as a result, it has literally empowered me to help others empower themselves. And, uh, because it puts everything into a process. As you raise the water, it all raises you better. Yes. Your booties. Most definitely. So you went to the seminar and mm-hmm. did the training. Then tell me what happened. I took the two day training and I had become the certified trainer and I decided that I really what you need to do is once you become a trainer, you need to start teaching it because then it helps the retention with yourself mm-hmm. and it helps you to live it better. So I had the opportunity of being able to um, start teaching it to my women's group at church. And uh, that was just fantastic of being able to have them experience um, what it's like to bring this process into their lives and have it be more fulfilling for them. Um, I kind of let things drop off for just a little while. And then about... I guess it was the end of last year. I had been manifesting with, uh, I've got two manifesting groups that I, um, have. And with one group, I said, I've got to do something more. And I knew that, uh, eight to great was where I needed to continue my, my life purpose. And MK started putting out, um, information on her website in regards to an eight to great, uh, ambassador. And I was just focused in well from there. It's, it's evolved into, um, I do trainings on a continuous basis, on a monthly basis here in the Omaha area. And in fact, this coming weekend, I'm going back down to Kansas City for another refresher because you can never get enough learning, in my opinion. I think learning is a beautiful thing to do. So, And there's a saying, when the student is ready, the knowledge comes. The Amen. The teacher is there. Yes. And, and, and really, you can read the same thing. Nine, ten times and get something different each time. Most definitely. And with the highways, one needs to understand that when it comes to the eight highways, they there's going to be something that speaks to you differently each time you go through the training. We have had many people that have gone through the training multiple times because it clicks with them. Some, Just like you mentioned, every time it's something different. Um, for me, one of my favorite things to do is I actually have the CD of 8 to Great, and it's my my classroom in my car. You might Wonderful. say, and that's what I do is I listen to that on a continuous basis. Okay, I'm going to have to get the CD now. Oh, it's fantastic. Okay. It's just, but, and it's MK's it's voice. A, it, it's, C, it's a CD, and she used to be a singer. Oh, at yes, the most Church definitely. I mean, she's got the voice. Oh, she does. So, as you've done MK's project, the Eight to Great, and you, you feel that it's helped you in your own personal life. Oh, oh. Because there's so many elements to it, 
Mm-hmm. And when one understands that you have a process, I'm, I'm a very visual person, but I also need no steps. No kidding. Look how you look. I mean, oh. you look like a little fashion plate off Fifth Avenue. Well, thank you, my dear. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's go with that. All right. Go ahead. But um, having that process of being able to stay okay. In highway number one, we're going to get the picture and, and focusing what those dreams are. And as you move through highways one through five, those help prepare you for really the big stuff, which is um, the positive formula, the positive attitude formula of FGH, forgiveness of the past, gratitude for the present, and hope for the future. But we always have to remember that everything starts with the thoughts that we choose. That's where our real power comes from, is when we choose a thought, we are either claiming our power or giving it away. And and eight to great helps us to understand that we really are in control of those things and how we can manifest things that we want in our life and help us understand what we've manifested previously that we don't want to have anymore. Wonderful, wonderful. You're a great speaker. Tell me about the church you go to and the church classes. How long was the class? And Actually, when you do a seminar, how long is the seminar? Oh, fantastic question. Thank you. Um, I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, otherwise that. known as the Mormons. Mm-hmm. And um, the classes really? that I get... And you can dress and look like this? Well, most Ta-da! definitely. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> as long okay. as we're modest, I, it's all good. <laughs> okay, all right, fine. I'm with you. Okay, go ahead. Um, but the first class I had done, we decided to do it in eight weeks. So we did one highway a week. And it was so impactful for these women because it allowed them to really go in and delve deeper into the process. I have then done it where um, we've done it over three different meetings or three different sessions where um, the class would be three times, Mm -hmm. like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then we would cover highways one and two, three and four and five, and then the last three together. And uh, and then I've also done it in three-hour sessions. In fact, um, this coming... A week from this Saturday, which is the 18th, I'm having another uh, eight to great three hour session and we give all the highways and we is go that open to the public. Absolutely. That? Um, what I'm going to do is because we have the pre-registration, uh, we can go ahead and give my phone number and email address and then I'll be able to go ahead and uh, send out where that location is going to okay. be. So, all right. All right. but um, yeah, so it just depends upon what people are looking for. And then they can come back again and again. I, I, I love definitely. that. I love the fact that knowledge is a continual thing. We have to use it all the time. Amen. And the other thing is, is this particular um, seminar is a free one. And so I, I wanted to do that this time, actually special for um, uh, this month, for the month of April, just because it's this spring and starting new and starting over and uh, wanted to have that be accessible. And the other thing that we do is, is uh, I'm a power coach as well. So not only a certified trainer, but uh, anyone who goes through the process then becomes can become a power coach as well, where we have the opportunity of helping individuals one-on-one. And as we raise our knowledge, we raise those around us, oh, our knowledge. And you know what? And then look at what their influence is going to be in not only their personal life, but then in their circle of influence that they have and how they're able to help lift others up as well. And what would you say your greatest gift is? Besides looking good. Well, thank you very much. Um, speaking and teaching and connecting with individuals. And why do you like doing that? It's always been who I am. I would say it's one of the gifts I've been blessed with in this life. And um, that's why I have 8 to Great is... It's my life. That's what I do right now. And Mm -hmm. I can't think of anything better than helping others be able to empower themselves. And at the same time, I guess then it comes a little selfish because then it empowers me as well. And as we teach, we learn. Oh, what's the saying? Twice learned, once taught. Oh, I've never heard that saying. When you think about it, you have to prepare. So you have to learn the material. Mm -hmm. But then when you teach it. You'll learn even more from the conversations and those um, inputs from the class. And it's just brilliant when that happens. You feel that synergy and it gets all exciting. So do you uh, learn each time you, you give a class? Oh, goodness gracious. Every single time. And then I always make more notes. In fact, any trainer who has taught any type of program would say that very same thing. And in 8 to great, it just feels like there's more enlightening because that's really what it comes down to is that enlightenment. 
and and tell us how we find you. You can find me at Kaylen K A E L E N dot eight to great, and that's all spelled out at gmail dot com. Mm-hmm. And if you are looking to register for the class, uh, you can also call me at area code four three five seven seven zero seven four eight two. Mm-hmm. And uh, absolutely looking forward to those people who are feeling that the now is the time for them to and it is move about forward. timing to when you're oh. tired of the garbage. Yeah. To get and step out of it. Yeah. And we need to get out of the garbage because we get full. And mm-hmm. when we when we are so full of garbage, what are we giving to other people? We're giving we're, them garbage. And, and and we're doing it unknowingly. Oh, most definitely. Unknowingly. Most yeah. definitely. Yeah. I I, I it, in my work I see people come to me and I can see the energy they carry with them. Yes. And our energy draws other energy to us. So oh. if we're in in garbage, we're only going to draw garbage collectors. Yeah, and people who want to learn to recycle don't. Yeah, so we have to learn to recycle. Eight to grade is a great process to do it. Mm. Um, we're going to have you back when we have our beautiful lady back. Fantastic! Thank you for joining us. Thank you for this opportunity. This is conversations with Susanna on the World Herald Live app. Please join us. We'll be here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.
Conversations with Susanna, broadcasting live on the World Herald Live app or on Omaha.com. Catch her every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, empowering you to look for and accept the good in everything. The future is bright. We'll take a look at what's to come in yours. This is Conversations with Susanna. You are exactly where you need to be. We're right here in the Omaha.com slash Susanna are the World Herald live app. We're right here talking to you about empowering ourselves to be better every single moment. This show that airs Monday, Wednesday, and Friday is all about supporting you, all about finding ways to make your life easier, and finding ways that will support you in the long run. We're here for you. If there's a question, you can always come to us on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, I don't know how to do the Twitter thing. I'm learning that. And ask any questions you want. We're here. We're here for you. And if there's someone you want to talk to or an item that you want to check into, let me know. We'll investigate it for you and bring you what we find with experts in the field. Today's expert is one who motivates others to be great. And inside of her book, if you're looking online, you can see her book is in the right. It's eight steps to, uh, eight steps to be great. I don't think it's eight steps to be great. It's eight to great. It's, uh, it's a book about how, I don't know, just to take eight steps to be the best you can be. We're going to talk to Mary Kay Mueller about that. Um, can it really be that simple if we take eight steps? The thing I want you to know about our Mary Kay Mueller, she used to live in Sioux City, in Omaha, excuse me, and she's a heartland hero. Hero. We'll ask her what that means, too. And then I want you to hear her mission that's on the inside of our book. And I think it's really important that we all have a mission. Um, my mission is to empower others. Hers is to open the hearts and minds of educators and students to their potential for greatness, instilling hope, inspiring possibilities. Hello, MK. <laughs> Hello, be back with you. Oh, it's an honor. It's been about three years since we've talked together. Um, now, you're an Omaha girl, or is that right? Uh, I was there for 30 years, loved it, loved it. And uh, when the kids went off to college, and I now have one in Portland and one in El Paso, um, I uh, was I felt called to uh, a new community of businesses and, and educators since we had uh, shared our, our love with the Omaha community for 30 years, so I'm in Kansas City now and uh, mm-hmm. a big Royals fan, so thank you for sending us all those great kids from Omaha up to our Kansas City team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're really into the sports things. So in all honesty, let's be honest with each other, do you think everybody has the potential to be great? Oh, absolutely, but we redefine greatness perhaps, from the traditional definition. Uh, It's one of the questions I love to ask my audience is, how do you define great, or how does the world usually define great? And they say a lot of money, a lot of success, a lot of fame. And then I love to ask the question, anybody here willing to be a great friend, a great parent, a great sibling, a great spouse, and all the hands go up. And so, uh, you know, obviously we chose the word great because it rhymes with eight, um, and there's been so many <laughs> wonderful books about different things, but but we really believe greatness is 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 um, is relative to uh, success for us in, in eight to grade is setting a goal or a dream and achieving it. So your goal could be um, a new size, you know, dress. Mm-hmm. It could be uh, running a 5K. It could be winning a marathon. It could be winning an award. It could be writing a children's book. It could be winning a baseball game. So um, so everybody gets to define their level of greatness. And uh, I was asked recently, can people dream too big? And I love that question. We can't dream too big 
for the world, but we can dream too big for ourselves. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you say, if if you say, oh, this is my dream, and you don't believe in that, then that's too big for you. But when I come across, and I do regularly, uh, young people, whether it's middle school, high school, college students, or or young, you know, millennials, and I'll say, what's one of your dreams? And they give me these huge dreams, and they look at me with all the conviction in the world. I know that they absolutely are headed for those biggest dreams. But but greatness for a, a stay-at-home mom might might be, I want to be happy, mm-hmm. so I can show my kids what happiness looks like, and I want to help them to get the skills of happiness. Now, that's a great mom. So... Uh, so I, it's a slightly different definition than the world uses, I think. My, my thought, and, and it might be because of my age, is just being the most in the moment. Being the most, mm. being great in the moment. Being a, a good person to my coworker, even though I called Jad, Chad a name and that he didn't understand. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I think it's being the best you can be in the moment. And your book will lead Absolutely. us to that. If we start on the highways of eight to great, um, you talk about getting the picture. Uh, highway one is getting the picture. Tell me about that. Getting the picture is the the, the difference that the happiest, healthiest, most successful people use that 95% of the world does not. And the secret that they know is when you set an intention, let's just pick one like I want I want, let's say, simple, to run a, a 5K. Right. Um, I'm feeling overweight. I don't, you know, I can't even really imagine myself running a block, let alone a 5K, but gosh, wouldn't it be wonderful? And I really have this passion. I have a story of a young woman who did this. And she was a teacher who hadn't dated for about seven or eight years, and she'd kind of given up on marriage, and just, just things really weren't going her way. But all of a sudden one day she said, boy, it would really mean the world to me if I could run a 5K. Mm-hmm. So there's a, an app on the phone that says uh, C to 5K. I think it's the letter C, and it means couch to 5K, how oh. to go from sitting on your couch to the 5K. And she did the app, and basically you really do just run like for 10 seconds and then you walk, and pretty soon it's 30 seconds. Anyway, it's a wonderful little app. And she, uh, what, so, so what, she, what we had her do at the beginning was imagine two things. First of all, we had her imagine what it was going to feel like crossing the finish line. And then we literally congratulated her and celebrated her and talked with her for like five minutes about what it was going to feel like as people were congratulating her and she's all sweaty and she's going, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did it, I did it, I did it. So we celebrated that. The same, and the same way we said, and this is again, she hadn't dated for years, we said, oh my gosh, your wedding was so beautiful. And we high-fived her, congratulated her again, and got her to what we call a feeling place. It's not enough to think your dreams. You need to believe or feel them. So I said, oh my gosh, I love singing at your wedding, Amy. It was so beautiful, and he's so marvelous. My gosh, does he have a brother? And I went on and on. Um, at any rate, she ran the 5K, I'm thinking, three months later, um, called me to celebrate and was crying and saying, oh, my gosh, I did it. I sang at her wedding a year and a half later. She was 42. He was four, He was 43. Neither had ever been married. Both were Catholic as the day is long. Both are musicians. I just saw Amy and Dave last uh, week. Uh, she's the music teacher in Ashland mm-hmm. Greenwood Schools, and uh, and they are truly one of the happiest couples I know. So, wow. uh, and I got to sing at her wedding. Yeah. Marvelous. So, so it, it was the difference between just thinking, "Wouldn't it be nice if?" and getting to that place of, "Oh yeah," this and is feeling the feel. joy of yeah. it. And feeling the joy yes, of the completed exactly. project. Well, this gets me to yes. Highway 2. And Highway 2 is risk. There is a huge risk of following our dreams. Because oh, there's, huge, there, yes. there, there's a thought like, oh, what am I thinking? 5K, really? So tell me how we handle that fear that gives us the risk. What do we do with the fear? Um, I love it, dear one. Well, first of all, I love how ancient this teaching is. You know, the, the most common, the most popular advertising campaign in the history of advertising is just do it. Right. And 300, 365 times in my holy book it says be not afraid. 
so so this is this has been resounding through the ages. It can, we continue to hear over and over and over. Uh, face your fear and do it anyway. So uh, so what I found in my own recovery from domestic violence when I was uh, 34 years old was I uh, had to go out and be bold and either choose to stand out or to fit in. And fitting in wasn't going to get me there, so I needed to, I needed to do bold, and we call them run to, not from, bold initiatives. So uh, let's just go back to Amy's case. She needed to sign up for the 5K, even before she knew she could run it. That was a huge risk. Mm -hmm. She also needed to um, go on a dating site, which she did. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, she'd never been on one. She was all nervous about it. Uh, One of my dreams was to take, is, has been to take eight to great national and international. And I, I'm not somebody who likes managing a lot of people, so I knew I wasn't the person to take it, but uh, I just... You are exactly where I need to be. You need to be. We're talking uh, conversations with Susanna at the Omaha.com. Susanna slash Susanna are the World Herald Live app. We are here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Our story is about helping you better your life with the knowledge we bring your way. I have on today... Um, M.K. Mueller. This is going to be our last sec- segment with her because I have Kayleen with me also who took M.K. Mueller's class. Uh, M.K. Mueller is, well, I like her mission. I want to reach her, read her mission once more. It's to open the hearts and minds of educators and students to their potential for greatness instilling hope and inspiring possibilities. MK, thank you for being here and ta- with me on air. It is wonderful to be with you. And uh, Susanna, if I can just um, update the mission statement, simply because now we have also added um, a business section to that because businesses have been asking us, would you please, um, share share the eight highways with us because it makes us better business owners, better business leaders. So we have updated that to say our mission at Eight to Great is to teach a process that enhances happiness, health, and exceptional success. So no I matter what it. your age, uh, this process is helpful. Yeah, well, so you much. know, really, eight steps eight steps to great is not limited by age. I mean, from uh, right. 90-year-olds to 7-year-olds or 5-year-olds. I mean, if we could teach this, and I, I must, first of all, apologize for a minute because we're not going to f- cover all the uh, eight steps. We're only co- covering the first four. And the reason we're only mm-hmm. com- covering the first four is that uh, we were talking about the anger, my forgiveness, my wanting to forgive everybody, and not feeling the anger. And you then brought up the story about going to the high schools and talking to them in the high schools about their anger before they're kicked out of schools. So my question is, Mm -hmm. does everybody, if they will go talking about their feelings, does that heal everyone? And is it a long process or is it immediate? Talk to me about... Feeling your feelings and feeling the mad and the sad. Yeah, wonderful question. Yes, wonderful question. So um, I was a speaker at Joplin High School after the big tornado. And um, normally when I'm working with, I'm coaching uh, an individual or working with a work or a school group, we usually start with step one, get the picture of what is one of your dreams, and then we move into risk and full responsibility and move up to feel all your feelings. But with the Joplin group, I knew that we needed to start with Highway 4. And so I simply said, "Has uh, have people been telling you that you should feel certain ways right now? And that both the faculty and the students said, absolutely. And I said, what are you hearing? And they said, we're hearing that we should be grateful that we're still alive. We should be, uh, you know, whatever it was. So one of the things we say in 8 to Great is don't shoot on yourself and don't shoot on other people. Our emotions are like the weather. 
and we can say, oh, gosh, it needs to stop raining right now, or I'm going to stop the raindrops. I'm just going to just hold up a, a sheet of uh, whatever <laughs> metal right now, and I'm going to stop the rain. All we're going to get is tired from stopping our emotions. The best way to heal is to feel, as I've heard you say before. Mm -hmm. And so allowing yourself to simply feel those feelings. So one of the, one of the skills that we practice in our um, A to Great trainings is uh, writing anger letters and, of course, burning them. Because the reason we feel our feelings is not to change anybody else, but to help us through. So often we were told, I certainly was told, you stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about by parents who were doing the best they could at the time. And they didn't they know really how to handle your understand. crying. They d didn't know how to handle your right. crying. So we're talking an unhealthy reaction, but from an unhealthy person who didn't know any better. Yes. My father's mother was taken away when he was seven, and she never came home from the mental hospital, and he was told, we have work to do on the farm. I don't want to see you crying. And so because he was told not to cry, he had to stop all the people he loved from crying because he was afraid if I cried as his darling daughter, he would cry too and he would never be able to stop. So um, I was actually able to help my father uh, reconnect uh, with his own tears at the age of 68 years old. It improved his uh, marriage to my mom dramatically. It improved his health. Uh, it was just the most amazing thing that once he heard my talk on Feel All Your Feelings and said, oh, my gosh. And he, he opened up about his, he'd never, he'd never told anybody about his childhood and how painful it was.